Okay, so let's go with your lecture, chapter seven, about file handling and application. In this chapter, you learn about the computer file, the data hierarchy, performing the file operation, control break, logic, merging file, master transaction file processing, and random access file here. The computer file, that is collection of data stored in the permanent storage. Right? You know, that is stored in the, in the permanent storage here. And basically, you have the text file, it, everything is stored by number, everything about the, the name, a salary that can be read by the text editor. And you have the file, it's binary file, it can be the image or, and, and the music is not in course at the time. Uh, and computer file has a file name right? and has a file extension. I, I do not want to go in detail, you know that, right? And uh, the file uh, size measure in the byte it can be byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, or terabyte, and so on here, and how we store it. Here, right? And in order to organize the file, you can use a directory as a folder and you have to find it, right? So you see, you might have to, you can have the file inside the directory and in, in, inside another directory, directory here. And it's a hierarchy, right? Now, about the data hierarchy here, it is describes the relationship with the, between the data component. Uh, it consists of the character, you have the field, you have records, you have a file, and you have database. Think about this one here. If you think about this one, it, it is a component of the hierarchy here. So really, if, if you look on the, if you look in the diagram, you see, if you look on the diagram, you can think about I store it into the employee here, employee. Dot TXC, right? To make simple, right? TXC. That is the file. That's the file, right? And it's just file here. You have the one, two, three, you have a four record. For this one, you have the four record. Sorry, you have the four record here. Huh? Each of the row is one record. Each of the row is one record. And for each record, I have a multiple field for that. I think about this one here. I have for each record here, I have the first name, I have the last name, I have the, I have the pirate, right? I have the pirate, I have the uh, uh, year of birth, and so on. I, I'm not really sure about this one, but that's how it how structure here, right? how, how data hierarchy here. Okay, I think it's all in the file. And for each row, it is one record. For each record, you have multiple fields. It can be name, last name, uh, favorite, or anything else. Right? Now, now, performing a file operation, the file operation can use data type, uh, sorry, can use a data file in your program. You have to declare the, the file identifier. Declare the file identifier. That is very, very important here. You have input file and you have the output file here. Input file might that mean you want to you want to read it, you want to read it and accept it to take that. And the output file that means you want to write it into the file. Now okay, think about this one. When it, in the program, right? Some of the in some of the programming, if you want to use the variable, you have to declare, right? You think about this one in the program, in the pseudo code, you can think about you have number and you have x equal to the 10, right? That means that is declaration here. Uh, that is declaration. That is declaration. And that is the variable. Uh, the same. The same way to work here. You have to declare the file identifier. So we see the number here is a data type. Data type. Uh, data type. And this one, variable name. Uh, you see, num, that means it's in the number format. Uh, and x here is variable name. The same when you work the file. So when you work the file, you can think about this one. You can think about this one. It is a data type, but instead of data type, it defines that you are working with the file and you want to accept it the file. And this one, you can think about this one. This is a variable. Huh? This one here, you have to declare identify as this one variable here. Okay. Now you can think about this one here. Now when you open the file here. You, when you open the file, you use the you use the syntax here. Open, you open the file. Huh? Employee data here. What's employee data? Employee data here is a variable. Huh? It's a variable, and variable you, you declare here in the case of you want to accept into the file. And this one variable here link it to the file name employee data. So that that's all. That is the process if you want to open the file. 
So you have to remember as a process here, when work is still report, when work is still report, right? You use open here. What is the employee? Employee is a variable. That the variable you define it here. You can you can use any name for this one. That's the variable name, right? That's the variable name. And you link it to the file name here, right? So when you're reading the file from the processing data, I think you want, when you want to read it here, right? You want, when you want to access it to the file and take it out, what's the name, right? What is the name? So we see input name, input address, and input rate, the uh, file rate. From what? From employee data. What's the employee data? Employee data. It is a variable and it is linked to the, the file name here. That's the process. Okay. So yeah, again, for now it's quite it's look awkward here, but I, I hope you understand the process here. Now, now do it again. This is the process of the declare the file identifier. Uh, this one is data type. That means you define that you want to read into the file and take out the value, I print it out the value. And this is a variable name. Uh, that's the first step. Now, if you want to open the file. You link this variable name or the data object here into the file name. Right? And in the employee data, you can see in the employee data, you have the field of name, you have a field of address, and you have a field, a field of payment. Right? So you see, input, take the name from what? From employee data here. Right? Take the address from employee data and take the payment from employee data. Now, I can go with us, uh, uh, right? So, uh, reading the file and process the data here, I have different way to determine how much data to input, right? You have the limiter here. Now, think about this one here. How employee data in the readable uh, uh, comma delimiter file might uh, appear in the text data here. So basically, in order to store uh, multiple uh, employees, right? You, you have to use the record here, right? So you see, you can think about this one. Again, each row, each row is one record. Each row is one record, right? So for this file here, you have the four records. You can think about it. You have the four records for this one. Now, for each record, you have the one, two, three, four. You have four fields. I have four fields. You have the name field. You have the, you have the, sorry, three OE. You have the address field and you have the pay rate field. But in order to separate the name, name field, the address field, and the pay rate field, you use a delimiter here. Right? So for in this case, it, it, it is a comma here. But of course, it, it depends. It depends on, on the way you, you store it. Right? Make sense? OK. That is the way you store data in the file and the record and the data here. So we see if you want to. If you want to read the three data item from the storage element here, you see, if you want to read it here, right? You see, that is the way you store it. That is the way you store it into the, into the, into the file, into the, into the, into the uh, permanent storage, right? So now, if you want to read it, read it, accept it to the memory, right? Input, that means take it out. Take it out, right? What's the name? What's the address? What's the phrase? So print it out, Matthew uh, 47, Maple and 17. And of course, if you want to move to the next one, you have to do the input again, you move to the next record here, and so on. And so basically for this one, you can think about, if you have multiple records, what do you have to do? If you want to read it, what do you have to do? You have to do the loop, right? Think about, you see, think about you have a hundred or thousand, you cannot input, 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 name, address, and file rate for every single one. You have to do it by the loop. You read it from the first element until the last element, right? Okay. Now, sequential file that program read all the record in the file from the beginning and to processing at one time, one at a time, one at a time, sorry, one at a time, one at a time. Ah, that's the process. Ah, you want to accept the file, read the first record, read the second one, read the third one, do it again and again until the end. One at a time, right? And so sorting also. So when you accept to the file, you take it out of the data. You can you can you can you can sort it in the ascending order or descending order. Think about you take it out all of the employee right, with the employee address and and the period, and you can sort it 
based on the name alphabet, right? A first and B and C and D, or you can put, you can sort it based on the pay rate, right? The highest one first and the second and the third. It totally is up to you, right? Now that is the way you accept in the file, take it out, right? You use the input here, right? you know, the input that means you type into the take, accept into the file, take it out, and then what's the name, what's the address, and what what is the file right here. Now, in the case, if you want to write in data in the file here, you want to write in data in the file, you use the output here. You use the output, that means you want to write into the file. Right? And say, so, you see, if you want to store it in the record, you have to follow the, the rule here. Right? You have to put the name, and you have to put the address, and the operator into the employee data. What's employee data? Employee data is a variable, object variable. Link it to the file. Let me use the employee data file here, right? Okay. And remember here, whenever you want, when you are done with the file, you have to close the file. Right? When you go to the file, you have to use the close the file here. Right? I'm always close every file you open here. Okay. <laughs> now, everything is about the process now. See. Now, some of the, here's yeah, some applications when you program that will fall file operation. The first thing is the backup file. The backup file here. Right? That is a copy kept, a copy kept in case the value need to be restored to the original state. Right? The backup copy is called the parent uh, file, and the newly revised copy is a is a child file here. You can think about this one. Uh, you can think about this one here, right? You can think of that will form the file version here. Now think about this one. I have a file. I have employee data about that here, where I store information about all the employee in my company, right? So in the in 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 all uh, in the in the all all of the employee in the in, in the file, you store in the three field here. You store in the name, store in the address, and the pay rate here. Huh? So you see, you have the many record. Each record is one employee, and each employee have a name, and you have address. And you have by race. That's all. Right? Now, the program here reads each employee record from the input file, change the employee pay rate. Each employee will receive the increase of the two. I think about if you want to give all the employee uh, increase of the two, uh, two bucks here, right? So if you he already have the 12, sorry, if you already have 10, he increased by 12, and 14 increased by 16 here, right? So you see, you have the definition here. Now, again, I hope you look into the flow chart and I hope you look into the zero code. You understand the logic in order to do with the zero code. So in order to work with the, with the debugging exercise. Right? In this module, you do not have the you do not have the uh, assignment. You do not have the assignment. You do not have the Python assignment. Only the debugging, debugging exercise. And you have the final code. Right? So basically, I hope you understand about the flow chart and the zero code in order to work with the debugging exercise. Now, if you look on this one, the first step here, right? you have to, for this one, you have to understand that you have to work with two files. You want to keep the original one and you move everything from the original one to the new file. And in the new file, for each employee user, increase the, the file rate by two. Right? That's why you need two files. Right? So see, you need to find here. That's why you need to declare the two variables. Make sense? You need to declare two variables. The first one here, employee data, link it to the, the old file. Huh? And the update data here, link it to the new file. Now see, in the old file, you accept into this, read it. Right? That's why you use the input file here. Huh? The way you read, this one here, link it to the existing file. Read it. That's why you have input file. Now the second one, when you read it, for each employee, you change the file rate and write it into the new file. That's why you have the output file here, uh, and you have to update here and link it to the to this one. Uh, that's the declaration in input file and output file and the variable name. Link it to the file. Link it to the file. Here. Now see, you have the name for each employee. You have the name, right? You have a drag, you have quite right. This one is a constant here. It's only number two, right? right? 
two areas number two here. Now see, what's the housekeeping here? Now, if you understand the logic of the loop, it works exactly the same. What's the housekeeping? How crisping, right? You open the you open the the, 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 the employee data, assign it to the variable employee here. Open the update here and assign it to the variable here. Now you done it. That's the, that's the first step. Now, in order to do the loop, you need to get the control variable, right? You need the control variable before the loop, outside loop, and that's the process. That's the process here. Input name, address, and pirate from employee data. What employee data? Employee data link to the to the existing file here. That means the action here actually is the read all information from the first employee. Right? It is by record by record, right? So see, this step here actually it only reads every information from the first record of the of the file. Right? So now see. When you read it, you check if it's end of file or not. Right? So if it, it might be it's a time you run it here and it's end of file, right? Because when you run it here, you have end of file, no more like. Right? So it's it. If not end of file, keep doing it. What is keep doing it? Keep doing it. That means move to the next iteration. Move to the next record here. Right? So now see, that is housekeeping here. That is the process of housekeeping. Housekeeping actually. The read every information of the first employee of the first record of the first row. Right? Now check if it's not in the first row. So what you have to do in the data loop here. When you call data loop here, what is data loop? Now see. You keep the name the same. Do not change it. Right? You keep the address to change. Do not change it. But you change the pirate here. Pirate, new pirate equals the old pirate. What right here? What's the right? Right through here. Right? So now. Think about this one. I have I address the 10 street here and the pirate the 10 here. Right? Read it. I have a 10 street and the pirate read. So what happened here? I change it to the 12. Right? Name I keep the same. I name I do not change anything. And the address here I keep the same 10 street. Now I change it. The next action I have to write it into the new file. Right? You see, I take it out already. Now I have the output here that means write into the file, write to the file. Name, keep the same. Address here, keep the same. Pirate, I already changed it to tell. Right? And what do you want to write? You write into the update data here. So what is the update data? Update data is available. Link it to the new file, update data. Right? So now, that is action you've done to one employee. Huh? Now see, again, the loop here. If you want to move to the new, new, new employee, right? If you want to do it again, you need the action to change the control variable. And what is control variable? That means you read next line here. And until you read it at the end of the file. Make sense? Yeah. How do you tell it to go to the next line, go to the next record? Okay, good question. So basically, when we the file, it only work is a sequential order here. Input, that means it's the first one. If you have another input, that means move to the next one. All right, so see, input here is actually automatically to the another one already, the next one already. Yeah, so All right, it only work in sequence, sequential order. Yes, yeah, very good question. Okay, so now see, if you understand the logic again, you right, see. If you understand, let me explain the logic here. Input file, that means you want to read it. That's why you have the O, link it to the O file here, right? The output file, that means you want to write it into the new file. That's why you link it to the new file here. Right? Now, read the first record. Read the first record. Right? Check if it's not and the file yet. Keep doing it. Right? What you have to do in it here for each of the employee, just change the file rate only. Uh, the change by rate only keep the name same, address same. And now you will have to write into the new file one by one, one by one, one by one. Uh, so we have to use the output here, name, address, into the update data here, update data, link it to the update data here. Uh, and read again, do it again, and again, again, until you end up the record here. You end up the file. Make sense? Okay.
The same is this one here. Now see how it works here. Now, let me explain it here, right? So think about we have you have A B C D is the name of uh, employee here, right? You have a thread here, you have by red here. So what happened here? At the beginning, you have nothing in the updated data. Right? And remember this one here. You have to remember this one here. Impro sorry. Remember this one here. Improve data here, link it to file improve data dot right? And update data here, link it to the to the update data dot that here. And at the beginning, this one had nothing here. Right? Now What's the first step? First step here. Read input, that means read it, name, address, and pirate. And you read it here. I first sheet, and you do see, you increase by 12 here. Right? That's why you do it at 12, and you write into the file. Sorry, you, you write into the file here. Right? So when done with the first record, you move to the next record here. When do the next record, you do the same. Take it out, change from 8 to 10, and write into the file, and so on. Keep doing it here. Make sense? Okay. And at the end of all set here, you already take every single element, every single record of the old file, and you write it into the new file. And the only change is that to pirate here. Okay. Now, if you look on zero code here, now you understand the zero codes. It's very easy for you to work with the with the with, with the debugging is inside here. Again, declare the way you want to do with the file, right? Input file, that means you want to read it from the old file. Output file, you want to write it into the new file here. And this link, link it to the file. This one, link it to the other file here. Uh, and of course, you have name, address, file right here. Housekeeping. The most important part of the housekeeping is that you open the file and you read the first record here. Uh, and it, check the condition here. Why is it not end of the file? You keep doing it. What's the detail look for each of them? You just change the red, right? Right into the new file, right? And again, move to the next record here. So see, if you under, okay, if you look on the pseudo code, the first step you have to open the slide here, to see what's going on here, in order to do work, work with the debugging exercise. Okay, do the same. Do the same here. Any any questions so far, guys? You know? Any question? Now, we move to the control break logic. A control break is a temporary detour of the logic a program. The control break program you do a chain, like that is it. You a chain in a value to initiate so action or processing here. A control break report group of similar uh, data together and the input record must be the, in the sequential order. So in order to work with the break here, remember that input record must be in the sequential order. When we have to sort it in the sequence. Now think about this one. You have the data here. Uh, you have data here. You have the name, you have the city and it has state. And this data already sorted in sequential order of state. You see, Alabama, Alaska, and Arizona here. Huh? You see, it always sorted in the, in, in the, in the already sorted in the order, sequential order based on state here. Huh? So now the program here want to do the statistic to see how many employees in the uh, Alabama and how many employees in Alaska and how many employees are in Arizona? Right? So how we do it here? Keep it check, stay the same, right? Stay the same, stay the same. In order to do that, you have to maintain the cow, right? You have to maintain the cow here, starting from zero. Now the first guy one, the second guy two, the third guy three. Now move to this one. Not the same anymore, right? Not the same anymore. So bring it out. The guy who lives in Alabama is the tree. And it was the same with the other one. When I move to Alaska again, see, when I move to Alaska again, you have to reset it back to zero. Right? You have to reset it back to zero here. Now, Alaska one, Alaska two, Alaska three, Alaska four, Alaska five. Now, not anymore. Right? So print it out. The number of employees in Alaska five. Right? So we see, 
in his slide counter. Check if the state is the same, if the state is the same, increase the counter by one. Uh, if not, print it out. Make sense? Okay. So how it work here? Uh, how it work for this one here? Now, you see, well, how it work for this one? If you look on this one here. The first step I mentioned, you have to initialize the color. Uh, I have initialized the color by zero here. Now, if you look on the, in the flow chart here, if you look on the flow chart here, see, you have the Gennady. What's the Gennady? <coughs> uh, this one here. This one has nothing to do with, with uh, writing. That's why you have no output here, right? You only have the input file here. You have only have the input file here. Only. You accept into the, into the file name client uh, uh, by state dot that here. And that is a file name. That is a file name client business by state dot that. Huh? Now, you, you, you declare this one, you want to, to, to read it and it start in the, in the object name is in file here. And what's in file? In file here, Link it to the file here. Uh, that's why you use open here. Uh, that you understand the logic here. Now see, for each of the for each of the one, right, right, you get the name, name, you get the city, city, and you get the state here. You get the state here. Right? Now see, you want to compare. Each state keeps the same in grid the cover by one, right? That's why you have to compare it here. At the beginning, you have O state equal to state here. Now see, that is the first step you read for the first record, right? First step we read, read the first record, right? So see, after this one, you have state, what is the state here? Alabama, right? That's why the O state also, Alabama. Make sense? <laughs> you get lost? Now, you get that D, only read for the first record. Right? The first record here, name, city, and state Alabama here. Right? So state here, Alabama. And oh state here, also Alabama. They are the same. Right? They are the same. Now see, what happened here? When you first it, right? When you like get it here, not as a file, keep doing it. Huh? Now see, for reduce report here. What's the produce report? I can come back with the produce report later. But for now, I hope you understand everything about zip is a process of accepting the file and read the first line of the, of the file. The same, this one also. That the process is the same. Huh? You see, you declare the input file, the file here, right? And you have, what is it? Uh, get ID here. Uh, yeah, get ID here, right? Get ID here. You link. This one through the file, right? take it down name, city, and state, and is assigned the old state equal to state here. That's the alpha mark, right? Now see, what's the next, what happened next here? Uh, now see, that's the first step. That is first step of get ID. Right? Get ID is a, read the first line here. So that's why you have name, you have city, and alpha mark here, state here. That's why old state now equal to alpha mark. Because that after this step, after this step, make sense? Take it out, state, what state here? You read it, you got Alabama, and you assign O state equal state, that means O state also Alabama. Make sense? Count zero, O state Alabama here. All right, so now what happened here? Let's see what happened here. <coughs> you read the count zero, uh, Unbetter, uh, Birmingham, and Alabama here, O state equals Alabama. What happened? What happened here? O state equal to Obama. You see, if the O state equal to, uh, equal to, the, sorry, if the O state, no, this is it. yeah, if the, uh, the state here, that means it's state not equal, right? That, that is not equal, you go to control break. But if equal, you increase the counter by one here. I see, you read it the first one, Obama, right? That's why you have count one. Now, you read the second one. Now, the second one you read is David. Birmingham, the same state here, Alabama. Increase the counter by two, right? Increase the counter by two here. Now, what's the third one? Sorry, and the so on here. That's the process. Now, we we'll see what happened here. You keep reading it, you keep reading it until they're not the same, 
right? Until the end of the same. So what happened here? What happened? You work with the control break here. What happened with the control break? So when you work with the control break, you see what happened with control break? You breathe it out. What's the cow here? Now you think about this one here. Now you think about this one. Cow zero, right? Cow one, cow two, cow three. Check again. Not equal. Huh? Not equal. What happened? You go to control break. What's the control break? You bring it out. Three. Huh? So we see. Three, four, Alabama. Make sense? Now, when the work is three for Alabama, you move to, you want to count next, you have to reset it to zero. Huh? And again, you have to now the old state here. E -E we put the Alaska, not Alabama anymore. Make sense? Now we do the same in Alabama. Uh, sorry, Alaska here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Not the same. Not the same. Control break. What the control break? Print it out. Five for Alaska. Eh? And so on. Make sense? Okay. Okay. You have to understand the logic here in order to work with the button design. Right? You have to understand the logic here in order to work with the button design. Let's see. Cow zero at the beginning. Huh? And I'll stay here, Alabama. Uh, do it first time. Uh, first time, the same. Stay here, the same offset. Increase the counter by one. Uh, move to the second one. Read the second. Read the second here. Same step. Increase the counter by two. And so on. Uh, and so on. You do the same here. Okay. Uh, Any questions so far? Any questions? I'm good. So now, yeah, no. So now, let me uh, let me uh, summarize here. So let me summarize here. That is the process. You want to update the file, right? You read every single line of the old file, and if you change something, you update into the another file one by one. Huh? That's the process. That's the first process. The second one is that you work with the control break here. Control break that means you keep reading it. If everything is the same, keep counting it. Huh? If not the same, break it. If not the same, break it and print it out. Call for Alabama. Three, call for Alaska file, and so on. Huh? That's the second process. And again, when you work with debugging exercise, you have to understand what is the purpose of the program. And if you think of it is a changing something with the first application, if you think about uh, breaking control, you have to work with the breaking control. You have to look in the slide, in the correct slide here. So that is everything about the breaking control here. Right? Now, you have another application here. <coughs> now, that is when you want to merge Oh, sorry, we want to merge the sequential file here. Merging file is a combine two or more files while maintaining the sequential order of the record. Right? And example, your file of current employee in the ID number order, and the file of newly hired employee also in the ID, uh, in the ID, higher, higher, uh, ID number order here. So we can think about this one. My current uh, employee is the one, I have three, I have four, you have five. Have six here in the order ID order, right? In the ID order, and new high here. I have the, I have the seven, two and the seven. So when I'm merging them together, I can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, right? So see, if you want to merge two five together, the first thing you have to think is that they must be on the same order, right? You see, this one you sort it ID order, this one is sort the ID order here, and so they must be on the same format, right? Think about the first also, the first you have the name, you have the address, and you have the parent. The second one also, you have the name, you have the address, and the parent. They must have the same data type as a data format. All right, two conditions required for merging file. Each file has the same record they have. Right? That means it will sort them, then address, and then parent for the first part. The second file also has the same, right? And the sorted on the same order. So it can be sorted on the name order, on the pirate order, or in, in a drag order, whatever it is. But they must be on the same order here, right? But we sort in the same control. 
Now think about this example here. This is a very simple example here. Think about it. You have to do five. You have to five. In the each code file store every uh, employee in the each. Uh, and the West code file here store every employee in the West. Now, the first thing you can see, the first thing you can see, they have the same layout because they store name and the balance. They store name and the balance. Same layout. Uh, the second thing you can see, they have the sorting on the right order. Alphabet here. Alphabet here. Uh, so you have two conditions. If you want to merge five, they must be on the same, uh, same um, layout. Uh, and the second one, they must be sorted on the same order. This one, sorry, the order of the name. Sorry, the order of the name. Uh, so see, when you merging together, you have A, you have B, you have C, you have D, you have E, you have F, you have G, and then you have H, you have I, and J. Uh, Make sense? You see, you have to find and merge them together. Make sense? So basically for this one here, you have to work with the three part. Uh, you have to work with the three part here. Read it, read it, and write it to the new part. Uh, make sense? Okay, now see how it works here. <clears throat> so the main line logic is similar to the other file processing here, except for handling two part. So basically it works the same, but now instead of one, you have to handle with the two part here at the same time, right? And uh, with the two input file, you must determine when the board file at the end of file. That means you have to read it at the end of the file. I right? read to every single record at the end of the file here. Right? All right. So that's why you have to define a flag. You have to define a flag variable to indicate the board file has to read to the end of file or not. If not, you have to do it, right? If not, you have to do it, whatever it is. You only stop when both of the file, you read it at the end of the file. Uh, now, you must define two input files and read one record from each other, from each input file here. Now, see, again, that's the process here. That process here. Now, I have its name, I have, sorry, yeah, I have its name and its balance here, and I have West name and West balance here, and that is the merge file here. Now, see what happened here. Again, I mentioned it here. You need the input and input because you want to read it in the from the two file. Uh, you want to read it from two file. It's far here is the object link it. Where? Where link it? Get ready. Where is it? Get ready. Get ready. Not here. Okay. Now, input file itself is a web file. Link it to the web file. And you want to write it out. That's why you have the output here. Make sense? You need to read it in the it file. You need to read it in the web file. And you want to right into the new file here. That's why you have more file here. Huh? So you have here, you have the you have the end name, that means ZZZ. And you have R both at end, you have no here, right? At the beginning you have no that they did not know that at both at end yet, right? That is the flag. That is the flag here. Now see you go with the guarantee. What's the guarantee? Let's see what's the guarantee here. Now what's the guarantee? In the get ready, right? you see, you open the file. You assign it to the variable here. That means you want to read it, the first file, right? You open the file. You assign the file name into the variable here. You want to read it, the second file. Now, uh, you open the file. That is the file name. You assign it to the variable here. That is the file you want to write, right? Now, in the get ready also, you have action to read it. Once you read it, read it, that means it take it out of the record of the it. Right? Take it out of the first record of the it here. Right? Take it out of the first record of the it here. Now, check if not end of the file. If not end the file, right? Do nothing. Right? But if end the file, you put the its name into the end name here. That means you have C, 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 C here. Right? And do the same with the read right here. Read right on self. Right? Read right here. Use the Read it the, 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 the line and check if the end of the file or not. If end of the file, you put CC. Now, check end. Remember that you only end the process when both of the file, you read it at the end. Right? So see, its name, CC or not, where's name, CC or not, 
said both of them yes. If not, no. Huh? So we see at the beginning we said it no, and we only terminate the process when both of the file is ready for every single backup of that file up to two, both two file. Huh? Okay. So what happened here? You see what happened here? You do the same with the serial code here. Right? You do the same with the serial code. You open the first file, the second file to read, and right here. What's the read? Read it here. Uh, check if the end of the file or not. Read it here. Check if the end of the second file or not. And what's the check end? Check end is check if both of the file end or not. Uh, let's check the file end or not here. Okay, so here's the process. That is everything about the get ready. Uh, get ready here. Here's the process here. How we sort it. So see, each time, right? The first time here, you read the first one. You read the first. You read the first record of this one. And so you read the first record of this one. Right? Because in your guarantee, you read the first record, right? Now see, you compare if the east left than the west, it left than the west. What happened? That means you have to write it into the file name because you sort it in the order, alphabet order, right? Let that, that mean you have to write first, right? So see. What happened here? See, at the beginning, get that data, right? You, you get the first record. You got the first record of the both file here. Now, you check the condition. This one, able, of course, less than, able here, less than 10, because it's sort in the alphabet order. All right? You got it or not? Okay, you can check it in, in the, in the file here. I see we have iPhone here. Let's check. Two. Huh? Because it's only in order here. Actually, it was on the ASCII code. This one I hear it's a 65 and C here, 67. That's why it lets that. Huh? Now, come back to this one. So, see, it compared, right? It compared here. This is the first Ivo. This is the first chain and compare Ivo less than chain. Huh? Ivo less than chain, that means you have to write Ivo into the file. Huh? That's why you write Ivo here. So see, when you done with the sorry, when you done with the Ivo from this one, okay, you have to read this one and compare it again, right? So that's why I see if less than read is once the read is that means you move to the next one. Huh? You move to the next one here. So see, when you read it here, you move to the you move to the next one here. Now you move to the brow here. Right? Brow again. Brow still less than. Right? Brow still less than the chat here. That's why you write the brow here. Again, okay. you read it again. Now we have the hot tea here, right? The hot tea here compared. No, I do not have here. Okay. Yeah. You have to greater than, right? That's why I had to write the chat here. I had to write the chat here and so on. The process do the same. If you got it or not, I think it's too much information for today. So it might be you get lost here. But you got it, right? Okay, so do it. Compare every single element. Uh, it lets us write it into uh, and move to the next one and so on. So that's this selection here is inside of a loop so that it does it over and over again. Yes, inside the loop, do it over and over. Until, until both of the bike read to the end of the bottom. All right, see, all right? So we see, for every step here, you have to check and check and what's it? Check and that means when both of the file end or not. If not, keep doing it. Ah, if not, keep doing it here, okay? <clears throat> so I think that's all for today. You got too much information for you. So you cannot digest it all the, all the way. And on, the, on, the, on Thursday, I can work with the, how to work with the master file processing and 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 how to work with the uh, raptor uh, raptor and so we have some information about the about the, the python or so but basically for this class you do not have to understand about the processing with the file the python 
you do not have the, any assignment in the Python for more than three months. And even the rattle also. But anyway, I think it should be better for you to learn something new. So I include in, in the slide also. Okay. Any question? Hello, any question, guys? Okay, so here's my suggestion, right? If you look into the uh, module here, or this way. For this way, you have the debugging the science final project here. You have 150. So again, my suggestion is that you have to look it. You have to, to find out how to work with the, with the final project. Right? And if anything is not clear, come back to me on Thursday. Right? Come back to me on Thursday. So by this, by this one, you can understand that. For this one, you have uh, you have uh, you have input a list of customer name and each customer with a specific quantity order. So this is a parallel list, not right? parallel order. Right? I think about this one here. You click enter, right? You can think about this one here. You have the first step here. You have to work with the parallel order. Right? right? The first one is a name. You can think about this one, and the second one is a quantity. Quantity, right? So we store in the array. We store, I uh, read the information from the from the user, right? What's your name? Uh, A. How many? Uh, 20. What's your name? B. How many? 30. And so on. You store it in the parallel array. Right? So that's the first step. You have to understand that. For this one, you have to store into the parallel array. And in this program here, I expect that you have to work with the defensive technique here. I, I, I mentioned it on the class already, right? You know that the quantity here, they must be integer number and greater than zero. I, I expect that you have to include this one in the log, log project in order to get the maximum point. Um, what uh, banner do you want for if it's less than zero? The, um, so, so basically, if it, it loops if less than zero, you have to print now. You cannot enter less than zero, right? And you force him to go back to enter it again. Okay, that's the loop. Okay, so now see, when we sort all of them into the array, right? All of them in the array here, 40 and so on here. Now, <coughs> you have to sort it that it actually work with the range map here. Right? You have the range map here, right? So we think about this one here. Uh, you have to do this 10, uh, 20, and 50, right? So basically, you see, you have to take the low range here, right? You think this here. You have the zero, you have the 10, you have the 20, and you have 50, right? And they match it with the with the with the with the this curve here, zero here, right? And greater than 10, you have the 10 percent, 0 0.1 here, right? And greater than 20, you have 0 0.2 here, and greater than uh 50, you have 0 0.2. It work with range matching. Uh, so now, take it out. 30, check it. 30, what is it? 30, you have 0 0.2. This guy. Uh, okay. So, in order to do this one, you have to understand about the parallel array. That's the first thing. You have to understand about the defensive technique. The second thing. You have to understand about the range match. And if you do not understand the range match, come back to the slide. See it again. Uh, and so I, I already did it in the class also, right? Okay, again, look it and try to find out how to work it. And if you have any question, you can raise to me on Thursday. Okay. Okay, let me check the attendance. Zachary Baker, are you here? 
Where am I here? Cameron, are you here? William, are you here? Pittman, are you here? Emiliano, are you here? Here. Caden, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Lastman, are you here? Here. Look, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Nick, are you here? Jose, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Martin, are you here? Shalon, are you here? Nathan, are you here? Aiden, are you here? Okay. Okay, so I see you guys on Thursday. And remember that you have to find out how to work with the panel project before coming to me on Thursday. Bless you guys. Bye-bye.